the composing of this video was a bite of a challenge. Hi, I'm Justin, and this is my friend Bobby Bones, and we're here to talk about assessing ancestry in forensic anthropology. In the beginning, there were four great races. Horse races, car races, motorcycle races, and the space race. Now, that all came later. I'm talking about Caucasoid, Mongoloid, Negrito, and Amerindian races. A forensic anthropologist is someone who studies skeletal remains for law enforcement, and part of their job is determining these races, which they refer to as a person's ancestry. As a forensic anthropologist can tell you, determining the ancestry of a decomposing human body is a very challenging dilemma in this millennium. I'll bet you're wondering why determining ancestry is so important. When a forensic anthropologist examines the skeletal remains of an individual, he or she goes about determining the biological identity of that individual. We use the term biological identity rather than just saying identity because we don't know exactly how the person perceived him or herself in the world. We can only make an educated guess by looking at the biological aspect of that individual. Determining the biological identity of an individual is done in a few steps. One, biological gender, two, ancestry, and three, I mean, three, age. These can be done in any order. Forensic anthropologists use this system so the branch of law enforcement assigned to the case has an easier time finding out the name, address, and family members of the deceased. And now, a by the way moment. By the way, did you know that forensic anthropologists are farmers too? Today, there are six body farms in the United States. One in Tennessee, one in North Carolina, two in Texas, one in Illinois, and one in Colorado. I'll bet you're wondering what kind of farming they do there. Well, I'll tell you. They have recently expired human remains shipped to them so that they can study the rate of decomposition in varying environmental settings. And on that farm they have a skull. Sing along with me. E-I-E-I-O. E-I-E-I-O. How do we determine the ancestry of an individual using the non-metric system? As you can see by this chart, we have a few methods. We primarily determine ancestry of an individual by looking at the skull, as long as it's present and somewhat intact. For set markers to indicate one's ancestry, we look at the shape and size of the nose, the structure of the face, the vault, otherwise known as the cranium, and jaws and shape of the teeth. Now for a few pointers, Caucasoid are people of European descent, Negrito are people of African descent, Mongoloid are people of Asian descent and Amerindian are people from Native American descent. Now, North, Central, and South America are all America. When we look at the shape of the nose of the skull, we look for characteristics in the root of the nose for high and narrow and Caucasoid, low and rounded for Negrito, low and rigid for Mongoloid, and low for Amerindian. When we look at the bridge, we look for high for Caucasoid, low for Negrito, low for Mongoloid, and medium for Amerindian. Next, we look at the spine. It's pronounced in Caucasoid, small in Negrito, small in Mongoloid, and medium in Tilted in Amerindian. The lower border of the nose in Caucasoid is sharp, gutted in Negrito, flat and sharp in Mongoloid, and sharp in Amerindian. The width of the nose in Caucasoid is narrow, wide in Negrito, medium in Mongoloid, and medium in Amerindian. Likewise, we look for indicators in the face, the vault, and the jaws and teeth. When an individual shows multiple ancestry traits, which is becoming a norm in this era, we call that individual admixed. Some examples of these admixed ancestries are African American and Hispanic, which is considered Caucasoid and Amerindian. And now, for a humorous moment to tickle your non process. I also must tell you that I play the piano, and that all my keys are made of bones. Not really. I'm pulling your femur. 
to be uh, honest with you, that's a fibula. I mentioned my musical talent because some friends of mine and I were visiting the church where Beethoven is buried when we heard some strange noises coming from the gravesite. So we all moved closer, and I bent my ear to the grave, listened for a moment, and told them, Ah, yes, that's Beethoven's Ninth Symphony being played backwards. I listened a while longer and said, There's the Eighth Symphony, and it's backwards too. Most puzzling. So I kept on listening. There's the Seventh. The Sixth. The Fifth. Suddenly, I realized what was happening and proudly announced to my friends, There's nothing to worry about. It's just Beethoven decomposing. Why do forensic anthropologists use the term ancestry over race and ethnicity? Personally, I think Stephen N. Byers says it best in his textbook, Introduction to Forensic Anthropology. I quote his passage on this subject. Presently, there is a debate within anthropology concerning the non-existence of race. Some researchers feel that only individual traits should be studied, while ignoring the natural groupings formed by persons who have similar skin color, nose form, and other characteristics. Anthropologists adhering to this belief prefer the term ethnicity or cultural affiliation. Other researchers feel that because these groupings can be identified, they should be recognized as natural biological entities. These anthropologists prefer the term race to describe these groupings. Whichever argument prevails in the long term, forensic anthropologists do not have the luxury of debating this issue. Rather, they must arrive at an assessment of these demographic characteristics to aid the police in their identification process. However, in deference to the debate and to avoid controversy, the terms race and ethnicity will be avoided in favor of the term ancestry to describe the genetic background of persons." End quote. As a 16-year-old, I couldn't have said it better. However, the future holds great promise. And now, for the moment we've all been waiting for, the Who Am I Challenge. I'm a natural blonde. I'm a forensic anthropologist. I'm the author of a series of books on which a famous television show is based. Who am I? If you guessed Kathy Reichs, you are correct. So click on that like button and comment down below. If you didn't guess correctly, rewind and guess again.